People everywhere are making really stupid decisions because they're scared. Fear is trying to make a deal with you. It wants to control your beliefs so that it can control your actions. It wants you submissive, silent, selfish, and disobedient to Yah's royal law of love. It wants to cripple your capacity to love. It wants you to save your skin at all costs. Don't matter who you are, fear hates you. In this pandemic of fear, just let's look at what the scriptures has to say about it instead of looking at the boob tube. Okay. First of all, fear is a spirit. Pray for Yehovah hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. It's a spirit. Secondly, it is prophesied that people will have a lot of fear at the end of the age. So there is no need to get your panties in a bunch over this. We were told this was going to happen. And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth will be anxiety of the nations. And so we're gonna look at this word Bible hub and we're gonna look at this dismay and it's 4928 Sonoshi means distress, anguish, anxiety, attention from difficult circumstances that won't move, but also causing someone to feel locked in. Continuing on in this verse, it says, with bewilderment, roaring of sea and of surf, men fainting from fear and expectation of the things coming on the earth, for the powers of the heaven will be shaken. If you are part of the masses who are scared that you or somebody that you love is going to get it, and so you can power and take the death jab anyway, even though you know that you shouldn't be, then you are responding to fear. Listen up, because what the fearful fear is going to come true. First angel went and poured out his bowl on the land and ugly, painful sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshiped his image. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Or perhaps you are part of the wide road counterfeit righteous Jehu Yehu group who love their golden calves, but who are coming together, laying down their differences in the name of God and country to fight the bigger evil. You actually also are responding to fear. What the fearful fear will come true. And in the days of these kings shall the Elohim of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. He shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken. Fear wants you to break Yehovah's royal law of love and instead try to save yourself at all costs. But self-preservation is a sin, everyone, and it has been from the beginning. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. The scripture says that fear is bondage. I sought Yehovah, and he answered me and delivered me out of all my fear. Some versions say freed me. Free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. You were redeemed with a price. Do not become the slaves of men. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery again to fear, but you received a spirit of sonship by which we cry, Abba, Father. Yeshua came to set those in bondage free. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed. But you're not in bondage if you're dead. Yeshua came away for you to die and yet live. If you have truly been mikvahed into Yeshua, his death, then you already died. The life that you're living now after dying, it ain't yours. It's Yeshua's. So consider yourself dead already, man. That will take a lot of pressure off. Even though you're breathing, it ain't your life anymore. We are buried with him by baptism or mikvah into death. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, our old man is crucified with him. Henceforth, we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Ye are dead and your life is hid with Messiah in Yehovah. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. His commands are for our good and he commanded us to not fear. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not gaze about, for I am your Elohim. 
I see four reasons why Israel doesn't need to fear. Number one, because Yehovah is with us. Elohim is our refuge and strength, very much found to be a help in distresses. On account of this, we will not fear when the earth changes and when mountains are slipping into the heart of the sea. Two, because we mean a lot to him. Fear not. You are of more value than many sparrows. Three, because man is nothing to fret over. Who are you that you fear mortal men, the sons of men who are but grass? Do you forget Yehovah, your maker? Four, because he knows you, me, his people, Israel, who have responded appropriately to the call by name. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Here are some biblical examples of people not caving in to fear. Queen Esther said, I will go to the king even though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for Master Yeshua, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If it is so that our Elohim, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, then he will deliver. And if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. King David, he took his life in his hands when he killed the Philistine. The scripture has some practical instruction about how to not be afraid. Do not not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to Yehovah Elohim. And Jehoshaphat feared and set his face to seek Yehovah and proclaimed a fast over all Judah. The day I am afraid, I will trust in you. Submit to Yehovah, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Shua actually has a formula on how to deal with worry and anxiety and fear. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or drink, and he goes on. After all these things, the Gentiles or the pagans seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things, but here's the formula. Seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness or right doings, and all these things shall be added unto you. You are watching Teshuvah Ministries' new one series. So in that light, there is only one name that you should fear. It's not Zuckerberg, Gates, or Fauci. If you do not carefully follow all the words of this law, which are written in this book, and do not revere this glorious and awesome name, Yehovah your Elohim, Yehovah will send fearful plagues on you and your descendants harsh and prolonged diseases and severe lingering illnesses. He will bring upon you all the diseases of Egypt that you dreaded. In the King James Version, it says that thou mayest fear the glorious and fearful name of Yehovah the Elohim. So let's look at this word fear. 3372, yeah. See, it's a verb and it means to fear. Fear, reverence, dreadful. We make afraid, put into fearful reverence. Yehovah Elohim is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him, which after he has killed the body, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. To fear Yehovah means that you will respect him and not commit crimes against his law, but will obey him because he is going to be the final judge on your life. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, his right doings, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings or their words. Submit yourselves then to Yehovah Elohim. So we're going to look at the word submit because we're going to submit ourselves to Elohim. 5293, pupotasso, a verb to place or rank under to subject. Put myself into subjection. Hello. This might be a newsflash for you. Sin actually leads to death. Yehovah Elohim doesn't want you to die forever if it can possibly be helped. To fear him will help you not sin, which is what will prevent you from living forever. And Moses said to the people, do do not be afraid, for Elohim has come in order to test you, so that his fear may be on your faces, that you may not sin. So believe it or not, they actually feared Yehovah in the New Testament. This isn't just an Old Testament thing. Shaul stood up and motioning with his hand said, Men of Israel and you Gentiles who fear Yehovah, listen carefully. It will go good for those who fear Yehovah because they obey him. 
I know that it will go better with Jehovah fearing men who are reverent before Elohim. Because the wicked do not fear Jehovah Elohim, it will not go well with them. He who fears Jehovah has a secure fortress. Fear of Jehovah is a fountain of life. The sloppy grace of Christianity won't save you from fear. Biblical grace will. 4624 Machina, noun, and it actually means an encampment or camp. It comes from Hana, Dahana 2583 means to uh, decline, to encamp, camp, camping, come down, in camp, settling. See that Hana comes from the Hebrew word Hanan. Hen, which is the Hebrew word for grace, it's a noun, comes from the word Hanan. Can you see how all those work together to show us that grace means encampment? Biblical grace is similar to a circle of wagons. Inside, the circle, safe. Outside the circle, not safe. Inside, outside. Are you awake enough to make this distinction, people? You get it? If you want to be safe, then you're inside the law. If you don't want to be safe, then go outside the law. Because you have endured and kept my Torah, I will also keep you in the time of temptation that shall come upon the entire world to test everyone who dwells upon the face of the earth. Fear and love are completely opposite. You can't do both at the same time, okay? There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. I say to Yah's people who are obeying and not committing crimes against Yah's law, but who are perhaps a little bit scared, listen to this. To them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your Elohim will come with vengeance, even Elohim with a recompense. He will come and save you. Scriptures calls us to reject this culture of fear around us, and it gives us the way to actually obliterate it in our lives. Repent, mikveh, or die, obey, live, have peace all the way to the end. But to you who are lawless, ignoring his law, committing crimes against his government, well then, you are not in the circle, you're on the outside of the circle of wagons, outside of his grace. Therefore, the scary things are gonna get you. And if that's you, you should be worried.